What is going on everyone? Trust the buzz here if you're new to the channel. I make Charlotte Hornets content, so if that interests you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you cannot tell by the thumbnail title of this video, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a Charlotte Hornets mock draft. We finally know where the Charlotte Hornets will be picking, and why we did not get Wimby, and we were so close. We got the next best thing. Now, some of you may feel like that's Scoot. Some of you may feel like that's Brandon Miller, and that is okay. I think both those players are very talented. Just for the sake of it, I will be switching it up. So sometimes you'll hear me say, Scoot Henderson. Some days I'll be feeling Brandon Miller. It, one, it'll make everybody happy. Two, I'm just happy we're stuck on two guys. That's a good problem to have instead of saying like, oh, there's eight different guys we could choose from. Choosing between Scoot and Brandon Miller, I'm okay. That is a good problem to have. So I'll just be switching it up. And of course, I'll be switching up all the other picks as well. But just wanted to let you know, I'm not going to pick Scoot every time. I'm not going to pick Brandon Miller every time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the mock draft. So with the number two overall pick, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting Scoot Henderson. Now, I know I just did the whole spiel about Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson, but the reason I picked Scoot Henderson this time particularly is just because I actually do like Scoot Henderson's fit next to LaMelo Ball. I think Scoot can uh, play make. I think he's an underrated playmaker. I think he adds some intensity that we need in the backcourt that we don't have. He's able to do, you know, he's able to attack the basket. He's able to provide rim pressure, which is something we do not have unless it comes in the form of Miles Bridges. So I'm glad that Scoot Henderson is there. Um, I know some people were saying that, you know, he's 6'2", he's not gonna be able to score. But I've seen Scoot Henderson go against Victor Wimbenyama. Hunt him on defense. Scoot, if you watched the showcase they had in, in Las Vegas last year, Scoot was literally hunting Victor Wimbenyama so that he can get Victor matched up on him, and then he would take him to the rim and score. So I'm not too concerned with his height. I get it, but I'm not too concerned. He has a 6'9 wingspan, so he has all the tools to be a great defensive player, and he's extremely intense when he plays. That's something that we also do not have, and these are things that off the court I feel as though can help us as well. I know, like I'm saying, the intensity shows up on the court, but that's something that he has, his character, and that's something we desperately need on Charlotte. We need some guys with some personality. We need some guys with some character. We need some guys who just get fired up. Scoop is that person. I know that you could be concerned about his shot, but Steph Curry's, you know, mentoring him, which, fine, take what you want with that. His shot is going to get better. One thing you got to learn about the G League is that, especially the G League Ignite specifically, they're there to have those young players star. So they take bad shots, they, they make bad, they do all these bad things to get it all out the way. But they're trying to push this guy as the star and get him ready for a draft. That's literally what the G League Ignite is for. So I wouldn't look at the stats and base your perception off stats. If you look at his game and say you don't like it, then fine. But I'm not looking at what he does statistically and saying, oh, this person's better, or that person's better. So you, you don't need to do all that with Scoot. All right, at number 27 with the Denver Nuggets pick, I got Kobe Jones. So what I like about Kobe Jones is that he is a wing uh, an efficient wing at that. He shoots at a high level. He scores at a high level. He's able to do everything uh, basically that the Charlotte Hornets would need him to do. He can play man. He can rebound. He can somewhat defend. You know, he tries on defense, but there are things to his game that, you know, are kind of missing. That He's not that athletic, but he's a smooth player. I just want better, more efficient, more reliable players. That's what you get with Kobe Jones. Like I said, if he's not scoring, he can play make. If he's not playmaking, he can score. He can rebound. Like I said, he, he also stays in front of his man on defense, runs the break, moves without the ball. He can handle the ball he can be a tertiary ball handler i'm a thousand percent okay with that so that's why i gotta go with kobe jones at 27. now at 34 he may not be there he may be there he may not i don't know but i got deron holmes out of dayton what i like about deron holmes is that and i've mentioned this before he's like pj he literally can take that pj role once again i'm not too much trying to change what we're doing because what we're doing is working we made the plan twice and the players themselves just did not rise up to the occasion so what i'm going to do is take guys to maybe knock out some money and then we can have we can you know get these key role bench players that you know that the cover things that we don't necessarily address in the draft. So if you take Deron Holmes, you have your PJ replacement. He is not the shooter that PJ is. He, not at all. And I even and I am saying that PJ is that much of a shooter. PJ is a really good uh, shooting forward, but it's not like he's some lights out shooter. Deron Holmes definitely needs to work on his shot. He does everything else well. He rebounds well. He rebounds better than PJ. I think he's a better defender than PJ. He has higher defensive upside than PJ. There are things that Deron Holmes do when you watch him play that you're like, this guy, I need him. He's going to try to dominate. He's going to try to assert himself on the court. And once again, we need guys with that kind of mentality. If there are one thing I would change, I know I said I wouldn't change much. I would change to have guys with just more fight, more dog in them. 
Deron Holmes has that. He can score in the paint. He's very efficient at it. I will take that risk at 34. 39, so far we've drafted Scoot Henderson, Kobe Jones, and then at 34, we drafted uh, Deron Holmes from Dayton. At 39, we'll be taking Kobe Brown from Missouri. What I like about Kobe Brown is he's literally one of the best true scorers in this draft. He doesn't score a lot of points. He's not someone that's dropping 30. However, he is extremely efficient. His true shooting percentage is through the roof. I really like what this guy brings. He can shoot free throws well. He can score well. Like He can shoot threes. He can hit the mid-range. He can uh, start the break. He's a really good break starter. He gets the rebound and literally tosses it down to the other end of the court. You got LaMelo, Miles, and Scoot running. I mean, it is just instant offense all the time, uh, especially off of board. So Mark Williams probably doesn't have to run down the court. He could just stay and, and cherry pick on defense. Is, does is cherry picking on defense even exist? I don't know. But anyway, Kobe Brown, he's that kind of player. That That is something I feel like the Charlotte Hornets need. Someone that can help get them started on the break. Because if you're taking Scoot Henderson, you're taking Kobe Jones, you're taking Deron Holmes, and then you add that to what we have, you're running the break. That's what you're doing. And that's what the Hornets did in the past to be even somewhat successful. We're, we're buying into that narrative and getting a guy that is extremely efficient with scoring. I trust him to score the ball. It doesn't need him just to drop 20. We don't need that. We're picking at 39. We're picking him at 39. Don't need someone to drop 30. This guy is just his in his minutes. He's going to be as efficient as possible on the offensive end. And I'm taking that any day of the week compared to what we've had in the past. And with our last pick at 41, more than likely by the end of this draft process, he will be nowhere near this. And I have a firm belief in that. But just for now, I'm going to take it because I love this player. Jordan Walsh. I think Jordan Walsh, if you just if you're paying attention to the combine, he shot better than Grady Dick, who is one of the better shooters in this upcoming draft. At the combine, he shot better than him. Jordan Walsh shot better than Grady Dick. And one thing about Jordan Walsh is, can he shoot? Well, that should answer your question. I know it's just a drill, but he he has three point upside. But what I'm really getting Jordan Walsh for is defense. He is going to lock someone up. I don't know if Jordan Walsh will ever be this guy who's dropping 17, 18 points a game, but I promise you he's going to be a guy like GP2 for the Warriors where he's going to have a job because someone wants him to play defense. He's going to play his role well. He's going to lock up the other team's best perimeter score, and it's just he's going to make it really difficult for him. He has extremely long arms. Now, I will say he fouls a little much, kind of similar to LaMelo, but more times than not, he's knocking the ball loose. He's breaking up pick and rolls. I, I, you really can't drop on him because he has the ability to you know follow the follow the center or close out if you're trying to do a midi so what that's what i really want jordan walls for that's something we don't have a true defender we i know we have dennis smith jr but he's a free agent also that you know i would rather have that at the wing position as well and not just a guard position so definitely look out for jordan walls i think he'll be a great player for the charlotte hornets and i really feel like as though this particular lineup that we have, this particular draft, if we do this way, could help the Hornets propel them into the playoffs. I really do believe that if you get rid of all the expensive contracts, all the veterans that don't really matter, take up time for the young guys, you put, you replace them with these guys, I think we have a future bench that could really, really be prosperous. All right, and that does it for this video. Uh, let me know what you think of the mock draft. Obviously, everybody's mock draft is gonna be different. Everybody's gonna see players in different places and just say, okay, I, all I tried to do is make sure the guys were in like three to four, you know, range. So let's say I have Kobe Jones at 24 as in my big board. 27 is not too far of a drop. So that's kind of the range I tried to stay in. I wasn't trying to do anything crazy like jump up 10 places. Of, oh, that guy. No, I try to be as realistic as possible. But as more information comes out, as the draft combine goes, as workouts go, these guys will fluctuate. So Jordan Walls, I think I'm pretty sure by the end of this, by the time it's draft time, we're not talking Jordan Walls at 41. We may be talking him at 34, maybe even 27, depending on how it goes. Because before uh, his season at Arkansas, he was seen as a top 20 prospect. So anyway, let me know what you think. Obviously, let me know what you would change. We're here to talk hoops. I, I You have a different opinion. I don't care. Just tell me your opinion. I, I don't, you know, just because we have two different opinions doesn't mean I dislike your opinion. I just feel more strong about my opinion. Same with Scoot and Brandon. I don't hate Brandon. People think I hate Brandon. I do not hate Brandon Miller. I think Brandon Miller will be good no matter where he goes. I just prefer Scoot more. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I can see obviously the case for Brandon Miller. He's the technically the better fit. I just think Scoot Henderson is the better prospect with the higher ceiling. That, that's all it is. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.